When it comes to modding consoles, there's nothing easier than the PSP. As long as your PSP is in working order, you can mod it to run custom firmware. That means you can run games straight off the memory stick, as well as other software like emulators. The PSP has just the right amount of buttons for Super Nintendo games, I've noticed. But the best thing is you don't have to listen to the UMD make a racket anymore. And contrary to what some people think, all PSPs can be modded. PSP 1000, 2000, 3000, PSP Go, and the PSP Street. And there's no need to worry about having to have some sort of older firmware version. Unlike with the Vita, which I unknowingly updated to unmoddability in front of over 300,000 people. Whoops. <laughs> The tutorial I followed is from Insane Nutter on the digix.net forum. I think that's pronounced correctly. It can be reached by clicking on the link up on the right or check the description. Might be a good idea to open it in the new tab because you're going to have to download some files from there. Or you could just read that instead of watching this video. Okay, here are the things you're going to need. Some sort of computer with internet access, can be Mac, can be PC, and Linux makes three. A memory stick, though a lot of people have been telling me you can just use an SD card adapter, which is nice. A mini USB cable, or that uh, proprietary thing if you have a Go. Or if you have a card reader, you can just use that instead of a cable. Of course, we also need the PSP itself, so go find your old high school backpack and dig it out. So the first thing we need to do is take a look at what firmware is actually running on this thing. Just go to Settings, System Settings, and scroll down to System Information. If you have 6.60 or 6.61, you're good. If it's something lower, just update to either version, and it actually doesn't matter which one. Remember that page I told you to open in a new tab? You can find a download link there for 6.60, or get the 6.61 update from Sony. Just download that to your hard drive. Now, either connect the PSP to your computer, or just plug your memory stick into your card reader if you have one. If you're connecting the PSP to your computer, make sure to select USB connection under settings if it doesn't connect automatically. Unzip the file onto your PSP's memory card. If you need a program to extract the files, check out 7-Zip since it's free. You should see this folder structure on the memory stick. Eject the PSP or memory stick, and on the PSP, go to Game and Memory Stick. You should see an update file there, so just select it and let it do its thing. Make sure to keep the console plugged into an outlet, though. I don't know what happens if the battery dies mid-update, but let's not even give bricking a chance. Now we're ready to install the custom firmware. The site has two files to choose from, so download either 6.60 or 6.61 CFW. Extract it onto your memory stick, just like the update. You can let it overwrite if it asks. You'll see a few new folders in the game folder. When you go back onto the PSP, you'll see the three new options. And now you want to run the Pro Update option. And it's installed. Yeah, that's literally it. That being said, if you turn off the console by holding the power switch rather than just letting it sleep, or the battery dies, the system will boot up with the regular firmware the next time it's switched on. You have to launch Fast Recovery before you're able to use the custom firmware functions again. I personally don't think that it's that much of a hassle, but if you have a PSP 1000, you can run CIPL Flasher to make the soft mod permanent. This also works with some 2000 models, but you'll have to check with this tool, PSP Ident. Just download it and extract it into the PSP game folder where all the other stuff is. If the motherboard model is not 88v3, then you can run the flasher on it and it makes the hack permanent. Looks like mine is compatible, see? Works like a charm. And now we're ready to run games off of the memory stick. So make an ISO folder in the PSP's root directory and just copy your games into there. Pretty straightforward. In case you're wondering where you can find games, uh, googling PSP ISO will give you plenty of relevant search results. If you have UMDs, there's another guide by Insane Nutter that shows you how to rip UMDs and compress the ISO files. Check that out by clicking the link either up here or down there. It's really easy and it saves a lot of space, so it's worth doing, actually. With that all done, I think it's time to throw some emulators onto this thing and bask in a bit of nostalgia. This video was actually pretty fun to do, and hopefully you enjoyed it too. I post on Twitter occasionally, so you can follow me there if you want. And if you want to support me, you can check out my Patreon page. I regularly post updates on what I'm working on there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.
is it? Oh, is it in here? Is it even turned on? Nope. Okay.